Looking for answers, yes, morning. Yes, uh, good morning to you both. Uh, this is something that one of our viewers got in touch with us about, so it's something we've had a little look into. Yes, morning, everyone. It came to light when a breakfast viewer in Cyprus got in touch with us. Paul Kirby and his wife moved to the island two years ago. But they've just received a letter from Barclays saying that unless they have a substantial sum in their account, £100,000 or more, then from September they'll have to change banks. We feel absolutely outraged and disappointed with Barclays. We've been banking them for nearly 50 years, and now, because we haven't got £100,000 in the bank, that we've been discriminated against. So, therefore, it's been putting a stress under us to look around the UK banks to get another current account. And at this present time, we're finding it very difficult. Well, Barclays didn't want to come on this morning, but they told us that the move is part of an ongoing process to reduce the number of territories it operates in, and they've offered Paul and other expats more time to make alternative arrangements. But with me now is Mike Foster del Porto, who's from Night Hairs. He advises expats all over the world on their finances. Good morning to you. Good morning. So how common is this story, then, that Paul's uh, face? It's quite often um, the case, especially for people leaving the country, um, a lot of the time when they've got existing relationships, as soon as they notify their bank or building society that they're leaving, they tend to get asked to remove their accounts and look elsewhere for banking. So it's quite common for someone who's le left the country, basically, to have to move to a, 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 to a bank which is in, within the country they're going to? Yes, or, or they can still hold bank accounts. There are certain banks that will still allow you to continue with that relationship, but, for example, with Barclays, where they're actually making them hold a subsidial amount of money. And... Uh, in this case, where, where they're changing the account, will it be easy for Paul to change? Because obviously he's concerned about it, isn't he? So, you know, will it be easy for him, do you think? It's not something that you can walk in off the high street and open up bank accounts in this sort of um, scenario. So there are banks out there, maybe the less traditional banks, that can offer um, banking for expatriates. Um, so they can open it up even being a non-resident. But again, a lot of the time it's a lot easier for them to maintain a relationship with institutions if they do it before they leave. And obviously you advise people on, on things like this. What's the kind of key thing you're dealing with when people are moving abroad? Because I guess they just think, they, you know, where do you even start when it comes to your finances? Yeah, it's quite difficult, but it, if they take a UK mentality about how they manage things, it's very similar when they go abroad. Um, we always recommend that they look at things in an area that they understand which is more UK focused. But, you know, losing allowances such as the ISA allowances where they can't contribute to anymore, pensions is obviously a massive um, area for expatriates and how they can maximise their pensions whilst not being a UK resident. Yeah. OK, Mike, well, thank you very much for coming in to explain all that to us this morning. And thanks to Paul as well for getting in touch. And that's it for me for now. Brilliant. OK, Steph, thanks. It's uh, 17 minutes to 8. You're watching Breakfast. These are the main stories this morning.